Here's how I used to speak Spanish. Si hubiéramos dado el voto a las mujeres más temprano, nuestro país habría sido más desarrollado en el siglo XIX. And here's how I speak Spanish now. Tanta carne, pero sabía como dulce. Entonces no, no me gustaba tanto. Y aparte no me gusta la salchicha. Entonces fue un, fue un desmadre. ¿Qué más? Otras cosas. Ah. Like you're hearing the difference, right? It's not just me. I'm not crazy. And it's because I learned to speak a specific dialect of Spanish, in particular the Mexican dialect. To preface, these are not my own words, I'm not trying to flatter myself, but it's literally to the point that when I talk to Mexicans, they ask me what state that I'm from. Like, what state in Mexico? It's to the point that when native Spanish speakers hear me speak Spanish, they automatically assume that I'm from Mexico, even though I don't, like, look like the typical Mexican. Which, spoiler, there is no typical Mexican, but I digress. All of this is to say that I think I have a little bit of credit when it comes to Mexican Spanish, so let's talk about it. So, I've been learning and speaking Spanish since I was about 14, so that's just under 10 years now, which is crazy, but I've been specifically focused on learning and studying the Mexican dialect of Spanish for about four years, so since 2019. I'm not gonna talk so much about my journey and like the specific reasons that I chose Mexican Spanish, but you're in luck because I actually made a whole video on that topic about two years ago, so if you wanna go watch that and get some more context, you wanna read up on the lore, feel free, I'll leave the link in the description. But yeah, the thing is, a lot of the tips I'm gonna point out in this video, or a lot of the things I'm gonna say in general, don't just apply to Mexican Spanish. They could apply to other dialects, or also just any language with a specific dialect that you want to learn. So even if, you know, you're not into Mexican Spanish, today's video might still be of help to you. So don't click away just yet. Stay. Stay. And before I get a ton of comments saying that Mexican Spanish is ugly, or that dialects don't exist, or that dialects don't matter because it's all Spanish at the end of the day, I don't care. Oh my god, me vale madre. <laughs> That's your first lesson in Mexican Spanish today. Me vale madre, okay? Okay, without further ado, let's get into the video. Vamos. So before we get into the resources that I used and the specific approach that I've taken for Mexican Spanish, we have to talk about a couple different scenarios, right? Because we're not all starting from the same place, I imagine. You could be a complete beginner, never having learned Spanish before. So essentially, if that's you, you have like a clean slate in your mind because you haven't been exposed to other dialects of Spanish, at least not to any like super meaningful extent, right? So this means that you don't have to like change your Spanish at all. You don't have to unlearn anything, which that was me. I was in that situation because I didn't realize that I wanted to focus on Mexican Spanish until I was like five years in. So there was a lot of like unlearning that I did, you know, replacing some phrases, expressions, and words like with new ones. But if that's you, don't feel super daunted by that. It's not a daunting process at all. It's actually super fun. So yeah, those are probably the one of the two situations that you're in if you're watching this video and wanting to learn Mexican Spanish. There is one general piece of advice I would give to anyone wanting to learn Mexican Spanish, regardless of like what level you're at or what scenario you're in and that is don't start with like a Mexican Spanish book. I feel like there's so many books out there that promise to teach you like the best Mexican Spanish or phrases and things like that but nothing beats interacting directly with like media and native speakers from the country. It should definitely be a more like listening based approach right because at the end of the day accent and dialect it comes down to like sounds and stuff. So a lot of the resources that I'm going to point out to you now, most of them are like, you know, movies, podcasts, like talking to native speakers and how to do that and things like that. So yeah, it's a very kind of non-traditional approach learning dialect, in my opinion, because this is how I've done it. Let's talk movies. I would be doing you such a massive injustice if I did not talk about movies first. I think this is one of the first things that I really interacted with, like Mexican media wise, that I was like, oh my God, I have got to get into this world. Like, this is so cool. For example, there was a really big film movement in Mexico from the 90s to the 2000s called Nuevo Cine Mexicano, New Mexican Cinema. And these are the movies that I really, really fell in love with, like Y Tu Mama Tambien, Amores Perros. I literally forced everybody in my life to watch those movies. Uh, other movies, I have a list here actually. La Dictadura Perfecta, Roma, El Baile del 41, Las Elegidas, Güeros, Ya No Estoy Aquí, and Las Tres Muertes de Maricela Escobedo. My favorite thing about watching Mexican movies is that you can't watch them without learning something super like interesting or important about Mexico as a country. And that's super important. Like if your goal is to get closer to a specific country, you need to go just beyond like the language and the expressions. You know, you have to be part of like a whole cultural context. So watching movies is a really, really big part of that for me. Now, aside from the ones that I mentioned, you can find other Mexico specific shows, movies, and documentaries on Netflix, of course. But there's one 
something that you can do to take that even further, and that is to study with LingoPie. LingoPie is an on-demand streaming app specifically for language learners. So if you've ever wanted to learn not just Spanish, but also French, Portuguese, Italian, Japanese, Korean, or Russian, this one's for you. If you're learning Mexican Spanish or any specific dialect of the languages that I just mentioned, you're in luck because on LingoPie, you can sort their shows and movies by country. And what's super cool is that they of course have their own shows and movies that you can watch on the app, but they also have this new feature called Netflix Select. So it's basically a Chrome extension that you can use to learn languages through watching Netflix. And with the extension, you can either learn with a side-by-side -side transcript or you can use their customizable subtitles. So you can have double subtitles or you can just do the target language. And on the actual app, the experience is even better because the app has the original customizable subtitles that I mentioned. And anytime you don't know a word, you can just click on it and it'll automatically save it for you as a flashcard, which saves so much time, oh my God. And you can review these after you're done watching, of course, but you can also do little pop quizzes while you're watching to like, you know, check your understanding as you go, which I find such a cool idea. So you no longer have to watch TV, go write down the new words and then make your own flashcards. Like you can do it all in the same app. Honestly, LingoPie has come such a long way since I first started using it. Like it used to just be for watching shows and movies, but now you can like, learn with music, they have group classes, you, there's even like a Discord community that you can join. I wish I knew about LingoPie when I was first making the switch to Mexican Spanish. It would have just made my life so much easier to have a bunch of Mexican media all in one place instead of like having to go and look for it myself, you know? So there you have it. If you want to learn Mexican Spanish or any of the other languages that I mentioned on LingoPie, you can do so with a seven day free trial and 55% off of the annual plan with the link in the description. 55% is a huge discount, I'm just saying. So if you like LingoPie, I would definitely take advantage. Now, my next piece of advice is to practice Spanish and exchange specifically with Mexicans. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. The way that I did this most of the time was through italki. I think everybody by now knows what italki is, but it's basically a website where you can take one-to-one -one lessons with people all over the world in like 100 plus languages. So it's really, really cool for getting into dialects. But yeah, on the app, they have a feature where you can like filter by country. So if you're learning Spanish, you can say like, I want to talk to somebody from this country. And then you can book with a tutor specifically from Mexico or Colombia or whatever dialect you're trying to learn, you know? This was honestly my favorite part because there's just nothing like one-to-one -one connection and that like kind of personalized attention, you know? And also because you're speaking to someone from a specific country, you're just getting like so much like new information and new expressions. It's just, it's really, really fun and hands-on. Another way you can do this is through exchange apps, okay? Exchange apps are always going to be there, you know, apps like HelloTalk, Tandem, even italki has a really cool like community tab on their website and the app. Oh, the power of the internet. You know, it's a, it's a really cool way to make friends and make connections in that country before you ever even go there. So you got to take advantage. Entonces chicos, my next tip for you is to drench your social media in Mexican content, Mexican content creators, whatever you can find, whatever type of niche or whatever you're into, just find that, but find it in Mexico and follow it on your social media. You know, this could be language specific, like teaching accounts, or it could just be fun cultural stuff or like content creators you find interesting. Interesting. It could be comedians, it could be celebrities. Like I said, whatever your niche is, whatever you find interesting, find that, but just do it in Mexican Spanish. So most of what I consume is on Instagram. So my favorite, favorite accounts, my favorite Mexican accounts on Instagram are probably memes, Memelas de Orizaba. If you want a Mexican Spanish teaching account specifically, you should follow Mextalki and Spanish with Saloa. Uh, some culture and art pages that I follow that are just kind of random that I think are cool are Colora la Mexicana and Roto los Chidos. Next up, YouTube. Some good channels that you should follow on YouTube for Mexican Spanish are Spanish Around, uh, Bora Falar Espanol, which this is actually an account that a Mexican guy made for Brazilians wanting to learn Mexican Spanish. So if you're Brazilian or you also speak Portuguese and want to learn Mexican Spanish, you could use this account. De mi rancho a tu cocina. This is actually really funny because it's just, uh, it's like an old Mexican grandma. I think she's from like Michoacan or Jalisco or something. And she literally just cooks in her backyard and it's so therapeutic. And you can just listen to her speak Mexican Spanish all day long. And this last suggestion isn't specifically a channel, but it's just a series that I found on YouTube one day and I found it so so interesting and you should watch it too. It's called Los Que Llegaron which means the ones who arrived and it's basically you know a series of documentaries about all the different immigrant populations in Mexico because Mexico also has the melting pot thing going on just like the U.S. does but with all these different populations so like 
Lebanese people, Koreans, Spaniards. Yeah, it's really interesting. So I will also leave all of this in the description down below. Now, moving on to podcasts. There's so many good podcasts for Mexican Spanish. It's hard to, you know, like choose specifically one. And it's also like the possibilities are endless depending on what your niche is. Like, like I mentioned earlier with social media, it's kind of the same thing with podcasts because whatever you're interested in, you can probably find it in, you know, a Mexican version. Now, for podcasts that specifically teach Mexican Spanish, I can recommend two good ones. One of them being Noitos. This one is really good. It's kind of just chit-chatty. It's like a couple of dudes usually talking about Mexican expressions or Spanish expressions in general that you should know, but they're both Mexican. So pretty much like you're always getting like the Mexican version of whatever they're teaching. And the second one is called the How to Spanish Podcast. I can vouch for this one personally because I met Ana and David, the two people that make the podcast podcast last year in Mexico. They're such a sweet couple and they actually just had a baby. So if you don't listen to their podcast, you're essentially insulting their baby. So now talking about podcasts that don't specifically teach Mexican Spanish, but you know, they are in Mexican Spanish. There's Radio Volante, which this is a podcast that just documents, you know, stories from all over Latin America. So not all of their episodes are from Mexico, but you know, a lot of them are because Mexico is a very big and influential country, of course. Um, and on their website, they actually have transcripts of every single one of their episodes. So if you want to learn like a lot more closely with this podcast, you can for free. There's also Se Regalan Dudas. This is a podcast hosted by two women that basically just covers like general culture and like current events and things like that. So it's a great way to keep in touch with like just the world, but through a Mexican Spanish lens. So yeah, man. I mean, if you're not the podcast type, I think that I just gave you a lot of reasons not to be. So that's all I'm saying. Now, another great way to get acquainted not only with new Mexican words and expressions, but also with the culture and the pop culture is through music. Once again, I've made your life so much easier because if you go to my Spotify profile, Elise.DeVega, not only do you have a general Spanish playlist, but you also have a Mexico specific playlist with a ton of Mexican music. This playlist has literally everything ranging from like the classic ballad singers like Juan Gabriel and Jose Jose to like early 2000s sentimental Camila to like Norteñas, which is like basically Mexican country music from northern Mexico. I don't miss, okay? Oh my god, how could I forget? Two words. Corridos tumbados. This is an example of a corrido tumbado. Los teléfonos no para nunca de sonar. What's really interesting is that regional Mexican music is having a big moment, even outside of Mexico, because of Corridos Tumbados. Like, they're going viral, people are loving them way outside of Mexico. Even people in the US that don't speak Spanish love them here. For example, songs like Ella Baila Sola are blowing up and getting the genre the kind of recognition that it deserves. <laughs> It's funny that this is happening because even in Mexico, like a lot of Mexicans themselves like discriminate this music and call it like naco, which basically means like low class or like ghetto. I don't know. But yeah, you get the picture. Mexican music. I just gave you so many options. Have fun. Okay, my friends, my last piece of advice that I'm going to give to you today, a person wanting to learn Mexican Spanish, is to read and watch Mexican news. I cannot think of a better way to get acquainted with Mexico other than to find out like what's actually happening in this country day to day. Uh, talking about newspapers, so of course you can read the big newspapers like El Universal or La Jornada to kind of keep up with like countrywide affairs regarding Mexico. But you can also read the smaller news networks, like one that I would recommend is called Pie de Pagina, and this is kind of just like independent news reporting on injustice and social movements in and around Mexico City. And I actually used to translate for them. So if you go to their website and look up my name, you'll find a ton of articles that I translated from Spanish to English. So, you know, fun little facts. But yeah, they're a great, great publication. Entonces, chicos, espero que estos consejos te hayan ayudado. Sin duda son consejos que a mí me hubieran gustado saber antes de empezar este camino con español mexicano. Entonces, pues aprovechen y buena suerte. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. It literally keeps the roof over my head. So leave me a comment if you have any more questions or just want to say hi. I promise I will say hi back. And yeah, cuídense. Nos vemos. Bye.